Hey everyone, and we're finally back with the replay breakdown. The uh, updated version of my in-depth analysis series. Why the name and thumbnails have changed, I'll get into a bit. But first things first, as always in these breakdowns, I'm going to pause the game at various moments to discuss various different things, why I'm doing what I'm doing, etc. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it on the lineup screen. So it's a carrier game, Enterprise. Uh, I actually don't know how well Enterprise AP bombs uh, act on a Kronstadt, but judging on the basis that it's a, it's a similar armor scheme to Moskva, they probably hurt pretty bad. Battleship-wise, I was probably the biggest threat. Um, Alabama, Bismarck, Nisenau, they're not particularly accurate ships, and as far as the Nisenau goes, uh, I can hurt him just as much as he can hurt me. Uh, so... Uh, as far as cruiser wise, cruisers are always your main food. They're your main course meal in the Kronstadt. Those are your primary targets. Um, and then as far as the uh, destroyer destroyers go, Yugimo has a pretty mean torp arrangement. Haida, it's not that crazy. But uh, so the lineup is actually really favorable. We're top tier, which means we have to assert our dominance. Um, and really, even if you're not high tier, you want to do that. So my initial alignment. On this map, I never go A. I, I hate A. It secludes you from the rest of the battle. Go B, C. But the key on getting B, C is to make sure you're actually contesting B throughout the entire battle. Because if you don't, and everyone lemming trains down to C, then the people going to A all of a sudden have you in a pincer with the people retreating from C. So you have to maintain control of B. That's my objective this game. I had a center spawn. That's my goal. So uh, as far as uh, the name change, uh, replay back breakdown, just uh, it, uh, it, it's more specific to what this actually is. Uh, there were some people getting confused on in-depth analysis, thinking that I was doing an in-depth analysis of the ship, similar to like Little White Mouse's reviews, but in video form, and that's not the objective. And I thought that replay breakdown made a lot more sense. So I get spotted here, and right now I want a neutral rudder, and that's what I'm going for. If I see something uh, open up, like a battleship, I will either turn in or out. Uh, we really don't have a DD really supporting B at all. For some reason, the Tashkent's going to A. I see the Alabama. I see the shots, but they're not coming to me. And so I'm going to keep my course. I want to be between B and C right now. That's my objective. That is where I can create some crossfires with the other battleships on my team, etc. Uh, so as far as the videos uh, go, I know it's been a while. Um, I had a lot of issues with my game, uh, essentially not working at all, let alone trying to record them. And so I finally got figured out the problems and got it resolved after like five days of working my butt off on it. Uh, by then, obviously the replays I had saved up to do a commentary on or do a replay breakdown, a new update came out and I'd have to download another version of the client to do them. So I just figured, hey, I'll just hop in, play some. And I'll get a game that uh, that I can feature. Now, I see a Baltimore. And honestly, he's who I really want to get to. And at this point, I'm not entirely... We're kind of... Seems like we're getting C for free. And now I'm going to get more and more evidence that they want to do a BA sort of push. And seeing that many cruisers charging center, this is something the Kronstadt can punish very well um, if you aim correctly. And... It's a no camo Baltimore followed by a, a slew of ships. And I'm just waiting for him to screw up. He's got a, he's either going to get owned by the entire team. He has to angle. He has to do something to get out of that situation. And I'm just waiting on him making that mistake. And this is where I think he's going to do it. And like I said, uh, as far as punishing cruisers, making mistake, Kronstadt, it's a uh, pretty, uh, yeah, pretty good. I mean, that was terrible. But just wait, it's coming. Do a little prayer to RN Jesus. Um, do another another uh, sacrifice to Nuffle, and then in three, two, now. Yeah, ka-ching. That'll work for me. And again, an Eisenhow. An Eisenhow, not a massive threat to the Kronstadt, unless it's in like super close range. And I'm gonna just farm him for damage a bit. What I'm keying here is that Alabama. I, he is a bigger threat than anything in the north right now. 
unless I start giving heavy focus. And what I'm trying to do right now is keep the island between me and that Alabama. He's kind of charging into a bunch of allied ships, so I'm not going to be, like, stopping to, like, angle. I'm going to just charge in toward this island, keep the island between me and him, and we're golden. And I'm just going to keep farming damage at this point. I, I'm putting myself in a position that the enemy has to react to me. I am not being reactive. I am being proactive. I want the enemy to have to deal with me. And I'm putting myself in a position where my teammates can adequately support if they react to me too heavily. If they decide, oh, well, I'm just going to full-blown angle against this guy. My team is there. We have a Monarch helping me with a crossfire. He stopped in that position, which was smart. A slew of battleships behind me and, you know, a bunch of cruisers. So I'm very confident in this position. Kind of hoping that Atlanta pops up again because the Atlanta, I overmatch him very easily. So I'm kind of hoping he pops up, but I don't think he is. And I'm checking the Iowa right there. So they're going pretty much all in on A. And then we see something here. And I'm going to pause it. There's a Yugamo charging into C. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Atlanta was spotted behind me, and the fact that I know I've been spotted this whole time, this is a mistake for the Yugamo. But we also have an Iowa pushing up on my side as well, and that's who I'm keeping an eye on. I want to make sure I'm angled when he comes around that corner, if he comes around that corner. I see the Yugamo, and I see him dropping smoke, so I pop a radar to help the Benson and the Atlanta deal with him. I don't know if the Atlanta has a radar on him, but his is almost as short-lived as mine, so I'm just guaranteeing it. Chuck some shots, and now I want to edge closer to the island. I want to pull away from the Alsace behind me so that we can't get this Iowa in a crossfire. Nisenau is unlikely to blat me. Gets an okay chunk. And now I'm going to set up, and here's where I'm going to uh, essentially going to cut my speed and make this Iowa push in front of me. I don't want to charge him. I want him to make the move. And then I see something beautiful, a no camo chap I have. This won't be a dev strike, but this is going to be a consistent punishment for him. Because uh, I'm going to pause it again. Notice where this Chapayev is going. He is an island to his left. So either he has to turn in or he has to keep going in a straight line. And that's where he's going to get punished. And he doesn't have a heal like I do. So this sort of punishment, this is damage that sticks. And sticky damage is always the best kind of damage. They can't heal it back, it's even better. That's why Torps are really effective against British battleships. Their super heal do doesn't cover it unless it hits them in the nose or tail. And I'm going to go ahead and try and take another shot here, but I don't think I'm going to get it in time. And now it's time to deal with the full health Iowa. The enemy team is kind of grouping up at A. We do have a... We've lemming trained a bit, but we still have a decent enough spread to deal with it. And again, I'm just going to assert my dominance. I am going to try and mess this Iowa up as much as you... Right now, I'm aiming for the front of his nose to get chunks. I'm not going for a Citadel yet because I know I can't pen, uh, get his Citadel at that angle without a, like, a freak of nature lucky shot. And now I'm pushing in on him. I don't want to just be sitting there doing nothing. I want to, again, make him react. And he is kind of shit in the bed here. Kind of thought about doing the chop yeah, but with him still maintaining this angle. Going for the second barbette. Only get a bunch of pens, but it's still enough damage to essentially whittle this guy down. With the support that I have from my team, this guy's gone. And now it's all about capping B. That's the objective. Try to guess this chop yeah, speed. I dump a shot, but then I notice this buffalo encroaching on my right, and I have to start angling in. I can't give a buffalo a flat broadside. He can't own me. I see the DD, but... It's going to take too long for my uh, guns to get there. I'm supported enough by my enemy team, by my allies, where I'm just going to cut my speed. And the second he disappears, I'm going to radar him. And I'm going to let my team deal with him while I deal with this buffalo, because the buffalo is a bigger threat. Now, if that was a DD with a more fearsome torp loadout, I would probably have to address him instead of the buffalo. But it just... Uh, just not the case. A little late on the radar. I'm pretty sure I pop it against him. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm that may yep, there it is. Okay. Yep. And now I just want my team to finish him off while I deal with the Neptune 
Atlanta, Buffalo. This Buffalo is smart. He's 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 picked a good angle. Neptune's a fantastic target for me because I overmatch most of his armor except the very Citadel armor. And right now, I just want to cap this. And then I'm going to push in, put myself, uh, it, it, make the angle between me and the uh, ships to my right more extreme so that we have a more effective crossfire. That's the goal. And now I'm just going to push in. The main threat to my broadside isn't there anymore. Nice and I was broadside. I'm going to take these shots all day. And I finish them off. And at this point, I want to get close to the I want to get close to the island at uh, D6 and 7 to essentially tell them, "Hey, if you want this, you have to push out against the rest of my team." That's the objective. Not a ton of pausing in this video. I have covered the Kronstadt quite a bit. And I thought, you know, going back to the Kronstadt as the, uh, when I rebrand this series would be a nice, be a nice touch. Atlanta starts pushing out. Uh, this is questionable. He knows I'm here. I don't have any other targets, so obviously I'm going to shoot at him. Angling in in case that, uh, Buffalo comes back around. I misjudge his speed, and my second shot should be quite a bit better. I got his speed down now. I don't think he's changed. And I nail him. Five overpens. I overmatch most of an Atlanta, so... Atlanta doesn't really have much of a chance. I mean, Atlanta versus Kronstadt, I mean, they're really... They're, the health difference is ridiculous. I mean, you could almost say that for any... Atlanta versus any Tier 9 cruiser. I mean, it can, it can melt the Atlanta. I'm pretty sure 203 is overmatch it too, but I have to double check my math on that. So now I got a now I got a little damage farm here. I see an Enterprise, and I go, you know what? This is honestly the best best target. I thought about pushing around to on that E line against the Buffalo, but pretty much an unprotected carrier. Me and a Bismarck going after him. We have AA covering each other. It's the smartest. Now I pop uh, I pop radar there for two reasons. One. I want to know where the Neptune, Buffalo, and all that stuff was. I wanted to know if I was going to be eating a, a wall of torps. I've been spotted this whole time. I want to know if I'm going to be torped if I come around this corner. Reason number two, if the Neptune is in a position, which he is, to torp that gap, I want to panic him and get him out of there so I can freely shoot this Enterprise. That's the objective. And I'm kind of worried about these AP bombs, so I'm trying to wiggle, make myself a harder target, and boom, there's the torpedoes that I thought of. And I'm trying to hit underneath the smokestack on this Enterprise so I can get a Citadel hit, and I find it. And at this point, he, this Enterprise is done. I mean, he's got Atlanta behind him. Even if I, if, I, if I stop shooting him now, this Atlanta should be able to kill him. He'll be launching planes in an Atlanta's AA. The Kronstadt AA isn't very good. It's okay with uh, when you have defensive AA, but overall. So I'm going to be looking at this Neptune, and I'm like, damn, I'm not quite getting around this corner fast enough. There's no way I'm going to hit him. So Buffalo. Buffalo's broadside. He's trying to bow tank um, pretty much our entire team. This sort of position, you see Hindenburgs do this a lot. This is not your optimal position. When you're a 12-gun cruiser uh, with you know AB and you know XY turrets, you want to be turning out that way you have the ability to create your own distance and manage your uh, uh, manage your engagement range. You can't do that if you're backing up. And so this guy's probably a battleship main who hasn't understood to do that. Because in battleships, you really don't have to do that. You have enough armor to deal with it. And that's my uh, fourth kill, I believe. And I really want to crack it at this point, but... Looking at the points, that really isn't going to be an option. So I try to get my guns on this Neptune to get him out of the corner, but overturn a little bit. And uh, I do have the uh, end game screens on this replay. I, when I finished this game, I was like, yep, I got them, and I'm going to show them to you now. See, I got some damage, I got some credits, I got some XP, and I got some achievements. Nice. Next screen. So we're I, I got top of the team. Obviously, with uh, two point over two point five k 
XP, and then my buddy in the St. Louis, the San Louis, however the French like to pronounce it, he was right behind me. So that's a good sign that our division actually made an impact. I wouldn't go as far to say we carried. Our team was actually pretty on point that game, so I'm not going to sit here and shame anyone. I, I think that was that was a very good game. It was, it was, it was uh, hard enough for me to do well, but good enough that we won. So I'm happy with that. Next screen. And as you can see, I really earned that Confederate award. And Confederate, I think, shows a lot when someone gets that. It shows that they had made a tw at least a 20% impact on the health pools of enemy ships and on at least half the team. So I do have more weight on that than I do when I see high caliber. Uh, potential damage was a little low, actually, for me in the Kronstadt at 1.3. But then again, I didn't really give anyone an opportunity to where they thought, okay, I can take this dude down. That never happened. I asserted my dominance. And anytime you're top tier and a and a good ship for your tier, you need to assert your dominance. You need to take charge and dominate the game. And that's what I did. I, I got over the uh, 50k threshold on my spotting damage thanks to a couple uh, good radars and in general just me spotting things because I was close in. So that worked out very well for me. And uh, damage taken, you know, 62k. I mean, the Chronic has got a bunch of health. So if you die, you will take a bunch of damage because you have a ton of health. Anyway, last screen. Here we see the credit, put the credits I got, uh, one over 1.2k uh, total. That's after you know costs and everything. Very solid number. Very as long as it's over a million, I'm happy. And uh, considering I did that without the Gamescom camo and an additional 50%, pretty good. Um, I'm kind of kicking myself and wishing I did have the Gamescom camo because that would have uh, been a lot more, but. I'm actually pretty okay with credits now because I've played the I've I have over 40 battles in the Kronstadt now and I'm in the top 10 players as of the time of this recording top 10 Kronstadt players so very happy with these results. Uh, if you want to learn how to make this kind of money all the time, subscribe, like and share and I will teach you more. Or uh, you can always uh, support my work directly with either Patreon or PayPal donations. I accept both. And you can start seeing numbers like this in your Kronstadt. But with that, and that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I'm going to try to get a little more consistent with my content. There was that issue with uh, my game not running like at all. It, it was like a clogged drain and I, it took me like a week to unclog it. And then another week and other production delays. Hopefully they're all done and we're ready to move forward and hope, and I can keep things being consistent. I do have some unique videos on the dock that I'm excited to bring out, uh, but they take a little more production time. And with clan battles in, that's also taking a huge chunk of my time away. So I'm going to try to get them, get them out as soon as possible. Sorry, I burped, but, uh, you know, I hope you guys have a great day and I hope you enjoyed the video.